guys, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, welcome officially to the channel. This is, as you know from the intro series, where I go into odd gaming accessories or peripherals that developers made to get us more into the game, either mentally or physically. Today, well, I think this one was literally just for fun. Let's take a look at the Hori Katana. So, before we get into the controller itself, let's talk a bit about Hori, for those of you who don't know them too well. Hori is a third-party accessory company founded in 1969, where they began working closely with console manufacturers right around 1983. Ugh. Seriously, what is it about people in that year? I mean, the market crashes and everyone jumps into the pool instead of getting out of it. Regardless, Hori has actually done well for itself, partnering with most major companies and platforms over the years, such as Capcom, Konami, Namco, Bandai, along with Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony. They are especially well known for their controllers, with their arcade sticks being some of the best and most recently priced, accessible, and best performing on the market. Given their pedigree, it would come as no surprise that many companies would come to them with ideas for unique, high-performing controllers, ones that they could package with various different special editions and exclusives. The Hori Katana was one just such pack-in. This controller was designed specifically for Onimasha 3 Demon Siege, and almost made as much for display as it was for function. Coming in at an impressive 3 feet in length, and even coming with its own stand, the controller is an impressive looking piece just from the onset. Upon further inspection, you can see that the controller would allow the player to attack just by swinging it likely using a more modernized version of an accelerometer like used in something like Batter Up. However, in this instance, the entire controller is designed to be wireless. That way, while you're swinging around to attack, you don't have to worry about taking your console along with it. A few other cool features the controller had is that it wasn't just a hilt, it actually had a blade that you could put on or pop off depending on space and, well, if you're in the mood to hit someone randomly with your $200 controller. They also managed to work a full Dew Force 2 vibration motor into the controller as well. Reportedly, there weren't very many of these made by official numbers in the States. There were supposedly somewhere between 3,000 and 5,000 total, making this a fairly rare controller. On top of it being wireless, they actually even worked a full controller into the hilt. Yeah, no kidding. That way, if you actually prefer just to sit down and use the controller, or want to move around while holding it like a katana, you can at least try to do that. I say try, as I really can't speak to the ergonomics of the controller itself. It was fairly expensive. I mean, by all reports costing up to around $150 new, with prices now going sometimes over $700 in just the secondhand market. I can see why in some respects, given its varied functionality and very stylish looks, that it would make a great addition to almost any and all game rooms, particularly with the stand that comes with it. What do you guys think of this one, though? Did any of you ever actually own this controller? How well did it actually work for you? How much do you use it or do you prefer to keep it on its stand? Let me know in the comments. However, for now, I'd like to thank you for spending part of your day with me. It actually really means a lot to me. If you could, do me one more favor, hit the like button. While you're there, if you haven't, consider subscribing. For now, though, thank you once again for spending part of your day with me. And until next time, happy gaming.